So one of the first things I want to look at is saving and opening files. Right now I happen to have a DOCX file. The DOCX extension of course lets us know that we're using a current Word 2007 document. But let me go ahead and close this for a moment. Or in fact actually I, what I'll do is I'm going to go to my office button and I'm going to choose open and on my desktop I have an older file. I've got a, the DOC version of it. Notice when you open up a DOC file, it's, of course it says compatibility mode because I'm using current Word 2007, but I'm opening up an, an older file. Now to update it, you can simply simply click on your Office button and you can use Convert, or you can do a Save As and you can save it to um, this Word document as opposed to the older 97 2003 format. And when you save it as a Word document, you're going to get the DOC X extension as I have now. Um, I can click on the office button, I can choose save as, notice I can save it as a PDF file, so I do that quite a bit. You can take a document and save it into PDF format, format, which is pretty popular. You can save something as a template, we'll check that out later. Or if I just go to regular Word document, I get my save as dialog box where I can choose a location, I can choose a file name. If I'd like to create a subfolder, I can si simply click on my create new folder button right over here, create a new subfolder. and then within that subfolder I can save my file. So generally the first time you save a document you're going to do the office button and you're going to do save as. Of course if it's the very first time you saved, even if you just were to click the little save button in the quick launch, or if you were to press control S, you would get the save dialog box. Now that since I've already saved this once, control S is simply a quick save. So as you're working on your document you're probably going to want to press control S on a regular basis to make sure you've saved. Now I can navigate my document in a number of different ways. Most of you are probably familiar with and I wouldn't be shocked if most of you use the scroll bar over, over to your right. So my document's just a little bit over one page, goes on to a second page, so I can easily scroll up and down. Now if this was a really big document, we're talking, you know, dozens or hundreds of pages even, the scroll bar might be a little bit more uh, tedious, might not be as convenient for us. And just so we can get an example of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end of my document really quick. I don't know where my insertion point is right now, but if I press control end, that'll take me to the very end of my document. The end key is just above your directional arrows on your keyboard. Now that I'm at the end, I can press control enter. Control enter will create a bunch of pages for me. And what I've just done is I've created several blank pages. You can see in my status bar that I'm on page 15 of 15. So if I press control end again, this is actually my page 15. So now I've got a bunch of pages. So no matter where I'm at in my document, if I press control end, I can get to my very last page. If I press control home, I can get to the top of my very first page. So that's a quick way to navigate. Now there's a couple other things you could do too. You can press Control G on your keyboard, and that brings up the Find and Replace dialog box, but it brings up specifically the Go To tab. Now I could go to specifically, I can go to page 15, go to it, and there I am on page 15. Um, I could go to particular sections, but we haven't done anything about sections yet, or I can go to particular bookmarks and comments, we haven't done those yet. So the go to command comes in handy on bigger documents that have lots of different things. So after you get comfortable with these various elements, then the go to command is very convenient. But for now, you might just enjoy doing the page up, page down. Uh, page up and page down on your keyboard, of course, takes you screen by screen, not necessarily page by page, but that's a kind of a quick way to navigate. Um, notice on my vertical scroll bar, I can do this, previous page up, and this is taking me page page by page, and of course I can go down page by page, the top of each page is being shown. So you've got a few different options there. Now if you click this little button in between these two, you get different ways you can browse. So right now I'm browsing by page. Now once again, like the go to command, this will come in handier once you have more features on there, but you can navigate by various items. So if you did have a bunch of, let's say, endnotes, you could use this option and you could browse to various endnotes on your document. So different ways that you can navigate through a document. One of everyone's favorite commands is the undo option. You do this if you make a mistake, right? So let's say I'm, you know, I'm just working away here. I'm going to go ahead and select this paragraph by double-clicking in the left margin. One, two, selects a paragraph, and I'm going to change it to uh, 
red text and bolts. Oh crap, I didn't really want to do that. So I can press Control Z on my keyboard. Control Z will undo that action. Oh, it undid the bold. If I Control Z again, it undoes, un, undoes the red color, undoes it. All right, so you can undo your previous actions step by step. Now many of you are familiar with the undo button. I just used, used Control Z as the keyboard shortcut. If you like the undo button, you can add it to your quick access toolbar. I can just click over here and I can put undo on there. Notice there was an option. I can also use the redo. So now I can redo. There's my red and my bold and I can undo it. Okay, so undo and redo. Something else that comes up from time to time is spell check. Of course, a lot of people finish their documents without running a spell check. Um, you should proofread yourself, but you can also use Word to spell check for you. Now, as I'm typing, Word is spell checking as I go. See, there's a red underline that tells me that this is possibly misspelled. Doesn't mean it's actually misspelled. It just means the word is not in Word's dictionary, so it's potentially misspelled. Let's try something. I'm going to misspell the word project. I'll misspell it right up here. Okay, so now that's misspelled. So the word project is not in the dictionary. And there's a couple ways you can fix this. Um, looks like I also misspelled the word magnitude down here accidentally, but that'll work out great. If you see a word that's underlined in red, you can of course right click and it's going to give you a potential, a list. There's, a, there's one correction. And here we go, it gives me a couple choices, magnitude. Um, you can also, let me undo those corrections, I'm going to control Z, control Z. You can also do a spell check when you're completely finished, which is actually a better way to go. It's a good habit not to correct your spellings as you're typing. It's a tough habit to break, but it's often better if you just get your ideas down. Don't break your train of thought. Just type away and do your spell checking later. But uh, when I am ready to spell check, I can go to the Review tab in the ribbon, and there's a Spelling and Grammar check right over here on the left. Click that, and it's going to run through my entire document. Notice that it did not get my first misspelled word. This is important. It started with a word which should be magnitude. Let me cancel this for a moment. What happened is, is Word started where my insertion point was. Of course, now it's after the word magnitude, before it was before that. So sometimes what I will do before I start a spell check, I'll press Control Home. Control Home will put my insertion point at the very top of the very first page, and then I will start my spelling check, and that'll make sure I start from the top, and I can change words as necessary. Magnitude, I'll change that one. I can double click on this word, that'll correct it. And now this one. Um, this is not a misspelling. Uh, what I could do if I know I was going to use it regularly, I could add it to the dictionary. Here we go. City, proper names, city names, they may not come up, but if you use that city name quite a bit, add it to the dictionary. Now be careful, you don't want to add a misspelled word to the dictionary. Now I'm going to go and insert a picture. Uh, I'm going to do the insert tab and I'm going to click on picture. And let's see, I'll find a picture on my desktop. There's one called computer. I'll insert. There we go. Now I now have a picture. When you first insert a picture onto your document, it gets inserted as text. Yes, the picture is text. Notice my picture is right there in front of the word proposal because that's where my insertion point was when I inserted the picture. So if I were to take this picture and drag it down, see that little insertion point right there, that faint insertion point? So if I put it in front of the word R, my picture is in front of the word R. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the picture. When you double click on a picture or other object, you're going to get a special ribbon. Notice that my ribbon has changed. I'm in the Picture Tools tab, or the Format tab, for Picture Tools. And Format is, is very unique. Watch this. If I click away, just in my regular document, the format for Picture Tools is gone. If I click once on the picture, oh, there it appears. Sometimes it doesn't appear, but it, double click will take care of that. Uh, now while I'm here, I can do a number of different things. I can change text wrapping to square. Now my text will wrap around my picture, and I can move it around wherever I want to, and the text will wrap around it. I can, of course, add some borders to my picture. Rotate a little bit. Sure, that looks good. And I can also do some cropping. So if I uh, click on the crop tool, I can say, all right, what if I want to take a little, there's not much room to take out of this, but let me show you. I'll just go ahead and take out the lower portion of that and then I so let me put that back okay so I've got my cropping tool and of course if I click on a picture I can easily resize it just by clicking and dragging the sizing handle of course if I want to be very precise I can just use my sizing tool up here I can say look for the height of the picture I want it to be a 2 when I tab down 
or click over here, that's going to change my width proportionally. The proportions of the picture will stay the same. So there we go. I've got some basic uses of uh, putting a picture in. I could click on this picture. I could control uh, C to copy it, and I could paste it somewhere else. So now I have the picture twice, and I can have two of these pictures. Once a picture is active, and I know it's active, if I can see the sizing handles, I can press the delete to delete it, click on this picture, delete to delete that one.